Starling Camper Network version 2. This is my permanent setup for now. I'm usually always tweaking things, so I'm sure it will change. I've got the antenna slash Starling terminal on a nearby shed to get it out from under the trees. As you can see, there's a lot of trees out here in this campground. I had to get the 150 foot cable to connect it over to the router through the Ethernet adapter. The Starlink router, the Ethernet adapter, and this 5 port gigabit Ethernet switch are located in an outdoor enclosure. Instead of leaving them in my camper. And then the switch is connected to a Netgear access point in my camper. Just, so this is just the wireless access point. And then connected to the access point as my Raspberry Pi I use for my network. I also have another uh, outdoor Ethernet cable going to another camper and I have access point there. I separated the two using VLANs. This is a switch that can do VLANs. Um, it's both, this is VLAN 2 and VLAN 1. But this should be VLAN 1. The idea is that you know if you're searching your network or you're even looking at your access point, only the devices, only your devices are going to show up here. Same with him, only his devices will show up there. And you know, the router app shows all the devices. Um, but seems to give a little bit more privacy. These are the statistics from the latest statistics from the Starlink app. Right here it says it's been obstructed. I got expect an obstruct interruption. It's obstructed. I can expect an interruption every five minutes. That may be true, but I haven't really noticed. I've noticed one issue at one point in time, but it only lasted maybe a second or less. This is the visibility from the app. As you can see, the trees over here in the northwest. But you know, this kind of visibility is perfectly workable. I've had Zoom calls and watch videos, Netflix, YouTube, browse the network with multiple people on the network and have had no problems with this. Latest speed test shows the, this is advanced speed test, shows the Starlink speed to the internet is 132 megabits uh, down 13 up now this is my connection to the Starlink router now my phone is connected to this wireless router which goes through the gigabit switch through the Ethernet adapter to the Starlink switch so maybe it'd be quicker if I just went here but I don't really see that as not fast enough and then um, some of the statistics up to up time over the last hour over the last 12 hours a little bit over two minutes of total obstructions latency so a peak of 107 milliseconds um, that's probably from the router to the internet and probably shows probably excludes times where it's obstructed I'm guessing and some usage you can see at these really low levels or the users had a YouTube video plan when I uh, took the, the snapshot. So that's really low low usage overall, right? And there's a spike, maybe you've downloaded a file or something. I'm not sure what that was. Again, this configuration is perfectly usable. I've been working for my camper for a week. I had no issues with it. Um, this is the Netgear wireless access point attached to my wall. This is the Raspberry Pi over here. Um, I don't want to attach it to the wall too. You know, I just have a short cable so it's kind of sitting there. I'm going to use the Raspberry Pi to run, run the uh, network monitoring software. Speaking of that, I'll switch over to network monitoring software. Here we go. Um, this is the latest this is the latest speed test it ran uh, 
so it's not an average, right? 164 megabits down, 18 up, and uh, 39 milliseconds of latency. Again, this is just one snapshot. This table is a ping to Apple, uh, GitHub, and Google just to see if we have connectivity. It looks like there was one issue at one point, but all the rest of these are green over the past hour, which means there weren't any other issues. And this shows the latency of each ping test rate. Um, now this gives you a five second latency. So this is probably these are probably times when it can't get to the network. Otherwise, everything else is down here in the noise. So uh, again, perfectly usable from using for I'm not gaming or anything like that. And this, this just has this in the middle, right? So if I move the, this, if I move. If I move the cursor, it tells you exactly what values things are. And if I switch back to the last 12 hours, which won't be won't be super fair because I did have to take the I did have to swap the power on it. But as you can see, the, this is a, this. Each peak and valley are speed tests, right? So you can see, you know, all the way up to here, I'm over 100 megabits a second. Right? There's just this one point here, which is 23 megabits. Really doesn't make, you know, again, this was probably a, an interruption that. Uh, that I really didn't notice, and then these are the these are the ping times over time, right? For, um, for so that you know you know what these green marks mean, right? These are all the pings. There's there's also a dashboard for Starlink. It's supposed to be pinging Starlink itself. Here you go. This. This is the actual throughput it found over the past past hour, past 30 minutes. Okay, so it's 30 minutes. So this tells you it's a two and a half megabits, right? That's nothing, right? Compared to the hundred that we have, and the latency. And then I think this one down here, the SNR, I think it's broken because it doesn't display anything. And a couple other items here. This this you can't see it too well. This is this version of the obstructions. Maybe this is the tree. I'm not sure if it's even pulling the data out right. So I usually just use the uh, the internet connection. Right. This is over last Sundays. So this is last Sundays. I've had it up. I've had to pull power a couple times, which is probably what these little drops are. It, this lowest level here is 50 megabits, which I would say is very acceptable. But most of the time, it's higher. So this is this is Starlink networking at a campground.